Hello and welcome to another episode of today's Shike. I am Pooja Devedi and in this segment we bring to you objective questions on a daily basis to help you crack prelims. So let's begin with the practice question of the last segment. Consider the following statements. Telecom Regulatory Authority of India was established by an executive order. Telecommunications Dispute Settlement and Appellate Tribunal took over the adjudicatory and disputes functions from TRI. So we have to select the correct statement. First statement is incorrect because TRI was established by an act of the parliament and not by an executive order. Second is definitely correct. The correct answer is option B, two only. The TRI recently released a consultation paper on regulatory framework for promoting data economy and sought comments from stakeholders to understand growth prospects for data centers in India. TRI was established by an act of parliament, Telecom Regulatory Authority of India Act 1997, in order to regulate telecom services, including fixation, revision of tariffs for telecom services. Moving on, it provides a fair and transparent policy environment which promotes a level playing field and facilitates fair competition. The TRI Act was amended to establish a Telecommunications Dispute Settlement and Appellate Tribunal to take over the adjudicatory and disputes function from TRI. Moving on, consider the following pairs. We have to match the animal sport from the state to which they belong. Erutha Zuvutul from Kerala, Kambala from Karnatak and Bulbul fights from Assam. So we have to select the correctly matched pairs. First is incorrect because Erutha Zuvuthal, which is also known as Jalikattu, belongs to Tamil Nadu and not Kerala. Second belongs to Karnatak, that is correct, Kambala. And Bulbul fights belong to Assam. The correct answer is option B, two and three only. Recently, the Supreme Court allowed Maharashtra to hold the traditional Bullock car racing event, which has been prohibited since 2017. If we talk about animal sports in India, Jalikattu, which is also known as Erutha Zuvuthal, it is a bull taming sport which is played in Tamil Nadu as a part of the Pongal Harvest Festival. Kambala is a traditional buffalo race in paddy fields filled with slush and mud, which generally takes place in coastal Karnatak from November to March. Bull bull fights are organized in the state of Assam during Bihu, which is a harvest festival, in the Hayagriva Madhva Temple in Hajo, near Guwahati, Assam. Often bulbuls are fed intoxicants to make them aggressive. Cock fight or the rooster fight is not indigenous to India. It is a sport that exists across the world. In India, cock fight is not just a sport but also a gambling game. Moving on, which of the following is are the features of precision agriculture? Higher agriculture productivity, more chemical application in crop production, efficient use of water resources. So, if we talk about precision agriculture, it means accurate point where water is produced enough to actually drip on one area. The water is made to drip on one area and that is why it is known as precision agriculture. That means accurate agriculture and it of course has efficient use of water resources as one of its features and also higher agricultural productivity. Second is not correct. More chemical application in crop production is not a feature. One and three, the correct answer is option C. Precision agriculture is an approach where inputs are utilized in precise amounts to get increased average yields compared to traditional cultivation, specifically water, and that includes agroforestry, intercropping, crop rotation, and it is based on sustainable agriculture and healthy food production and it consists of profitability and increasing production, economic efficiency and the reduction of side effects on the environment. Although precision agriculture, I in the beginning of the session of this question itself, I told you that accurate amount of water is used to be made to drip on a particular area. It also includes the usage of other resources apart from water to be used in a precise amount. So it's not only centric to water, okay? Moving on, let's look at the benefits. Increases agricultural productivity, prevents soil degradation, reduces chemical application and crop production, efficient use of water resources, disseminates modern farm practices to improve the quality, 
quantity and reduced cost of production. Moving on, changes the socio-economic status of farmers is a feature as well. Moving on, green strategic partnership has been recently in the news. It is a bilateral partnership of India with which of the following countries? The correct answer to this question is option A, that is Denmark. In September 2020, India and Denmark entered into a new age green strategic partnership following a virtual summit chaired by both Prime Ministers. India and Denmark both have ambitious goals within the climate agenda and are including more suits sustainable practices day by day. The green strategic partnership provides a perfect framework because it emphasizes how international collaboration can help accelerate the green transition and deliver on global goals. Moving on to the next statements. The partnership focuses on expanding economic ties, green growth and co cooperation on global challenges such as climate change. Green growth is a term used to describe a path of economic growth that uses natural resources in a sustainable manner. Other key points if we have to talk about under the partnership, it includes dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic and cooperation in water efficiency and water loss. Moving on, the Vihangam platform recently seen in the news is related to it is related to real-time transmission of aerial video of mining activities. Let's look at the explanation. Recently, an internet-based platform called Vihangam integrated with a remotely piloted aircraft system at Mahanadi Gold Fields Limited was inaugurated. The system consists of a ground control station, an RPAS internet lease line of 40 Mbps and Vihangam portal as well. The system enables real-time transmission of aerial video of mining activities from mines to internet platforms which can be accessed through Vihangam portal by authorized personnel only having ID and password. Let's look at the next question. Consider the following statements. The Karman line is a point from where the boundary of space starts. The suborbital trajectory allows the space flight to escape the gravity of Earth. So we have to select the correct answer from the quotes. First is correct, second is incorrect. The correct answer is option A, one only. When an object travels at a horizontal speed of about 28,000 km per hour or more, it goes into orbit once it is above the atmosphere. Such a satellite would be accelerating towards the Earth due to gravity, but its horizontal movement is fast enough to offset the downward motion so that it moves along a circular path. Any object traveling slower than 28,000 km per hour must eventually return to Earth. Any object that launches to space but does not reach sufficient horizontal velocity to stay in space falls back to Earth. Hence, they fly in a suborbital trajectory. It means that while these vehicles will cross the ill-defined boundary of space, they will not be going fast enough to stay in space once they get there. The most widely accepted boundary of space is known as the Karman Line. The Federation Aeronautique Internationale defines Karman Line as the altitude of 100 km above Earth's mean sea level. It is named after Theodore von Karman, a Hungarian-American engineer and physicist who was active primarily in aeronautics and astronautics. Moving on to the next question. With respect to expressways in India, consider the following statements. Ganga Expressway after completion will become the longest expressway in Uttar Pradesh. It will start from Bijnor and end in Sonbhadra. The Delhi-Mumbai Expressway after completion will be the longest expressway in the world. So we have to select the correct statement or statements. First is correct that Ganga Expressway after completion will become the longest expressway in Uttar Pradesh and the Delhi-Mumbai Expressway after completion will be the longest expressway in the world. But second is not correct. Ganga Expressway, the Dimensions given here end to end are not correct. Let's know why. One and three are the correct answer over here. Option B. Prime Minister Narendra Modi laid the foundation stone of Ganga Expressway in Shah Jahanpur, Uttar Pradesh today. The Ganga Expressway is 594 km long. It's a six-lane expressway. It will be built at a cost of over 36,200 crore, starting near the Bijoli village in Meerut. The expressway will extend till near the Judapur Dandu village in Prayag Raj. It passes through Meerut, Hapur, Buland Shahar, Amroha, Sambal, Badaun, Shah Jahanpur, Hardoi, Unnao, Rai Bareli, Pratapgarh and Prayagraj districts. Remember the name of the districts from the perspective of UPPSC. 
upon completion of work it will become the longest expressway of uttar pradesh connecting the western and eastern regions of the state if we talk about delhi mumbai expressway the work on the eight lane delhi mumbai expressway is being completed and it will be completed by march 2023 the length is 1380 kilometers the expressway is very long and it is being constructed for rupees 98000 crores after completion it will be the world's longest expressway moving on the expressway will pass through six states of delhi haryana rajasthan madhya pradesh gujarat and maharashtra please remember the names the foundation stone was laid on the in the year 2019 on 9th march moving on out of 1380 kilometers contracts for more than 1200 kilometers have already been awarded and are under progress let's look at the next question consider the following statements with respect to the indian india central asia dialogue the first edition of india central asia dialogue was held in 2017 india is hosting the current edition of the dialogue so we have to select the correct statement the first statement is incorrect because the first edition was held in january 2019 and the current edition is being hosted by india first is incorrect second is correct the correct answer is option b the third india central asia dialogue begins today in new delhi and external affairs minister s jay shankar will host the three day dialogue india's external affairs minister sushma suraj the then eam she participated in the first india central asia dialogue in samarkand republic of uzbekistan in 2019 moving on india virtually hosted the second meeting of the india central asia dialogue in 2020 and india is hosting the third edition of the india central asia dialogue in new delhi to discuss further strengthening of relations between member states with a focus on trade connectivity and development cooperation look at the members of central asia let's look at the next question consider the following statements with respect to the commission for air quality management it is chaired by a government official of the rank of secretary of chief or chief secretary it will be a permanent and statutory body and the commission supersedes bodies such as the central and state pollution control boards of delhi punjab haryana up and rajasthan so we have to select the correct statement or statements all these statements are correct the correct answer is option d the commission for air quality management in ncr and adjoining areas has directed that restrictions on many construction and demolition activities will continue in the ncr till further orders in view of air pollution caqm was formed by an ordinance in october 2020 the commission for air quality management in national capital region and adjoining areas ordinance of 2020 it is chaired by a government official of the rank of secretary or chief secretary it is a permanent body will have 20 members and the commission is a statutory authority the commission supersedes bodies such as central and state pollution control boards of delhi haryana punjab up and rajasthan it has exclusive jurisdiction over the ncr including areas in haryana punjab uttar pradesh and rajasthan in the matters of air pollution it will be working along with cpcb and isro apart from the respective state governments moving on consider the following statements with respect to federation of indian chamber of commerce and industry it is the largest and oldest apex business organization in india it was established in 1926 and is a not for profit organization so we have to select the correct statement or statements first is correct second is not because although it is a not for profit organization and non government organization it was established in 1927 and not 26 so the correct answer is option a that is one only defense minister rajnath singh will address the 94th annual convention of fiki in new delhi today he will share his views on growing potential in defense sector and the opportunities present for indian industry Fiki was established in 1927 as a non-government not-for-profit organization. It is the voice of India's business and industry. It is the largest and oldest apex business organization in India with having its history closely interwoven with India's struggle for independence, the industrialization of India and the emergence of India as one of the most rapidly growing global economies from influencing policy to encouraging debate engaging with policy makers and civil society fiki articulates the views and concerns of industry moving on consider the following statements with respect to asian champions trophy 2021 it is being held in sri lanka india has beaten pakistan to face germany in the next round we have to select the statement which is or are not correct 
Asian Champions Trophy is being held in Bangladesh. So first is not correct. And yes, India has beaten Pakistan, but not to face Germany, but Japan in the next round tomorrow. So the correct answer should be option C, both one and two. In hockey, India registered a big 3-1 win over arch rivals Pakistan in a high-intensity round-robin clash of men's Asian Champions Trophy in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Harman Preet Singh and Akash Deep Singh were among the goal scorers for India and with this, India has consolidated its position at the top of the table with two wins and a draw in three matches. India will now take on Japan tomorrow at 3 p.m., that is the Indian time, and the top four teams at the round-robin stage will progress to the semi-final match, which will take place on 21st of the month. Moving on, let's look at the practice question for our next segment. Consider the following statements. The Government of India transaction of Business Rule 1961 emerges from Article 77 Clause 3 of the Constitution. The Parliament makes rules for the more convenient transaction of business of the Government of India and the Cabinet Committees are constituted by the Prime Minister to lessen the enormous workload of the Cabinet. So we have to select the correct answer. So that's it for today. Tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment. Until then, stay updated and thank you so much for watching.